And let's begin in the name of God, the Lord of mercy, the giver of mercy. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Peace be to you all and welcome to the next episode in our hadith series. Today I'm discussing the hadith of Abi Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him. Where he said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, where the Messenger of God, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, said, إِذَا قَاتَلَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَجْتَنِ بِالْوَجْ If one of you is to fight, then let him avoid the face. Now the reason that we're discussing this hadith today is because it comes up quite a lot, especially when it comes to um, the rise of MMA, you know, um, Khabib as a fighter. There's a lot of debate and discussion that goes on about as, uh, as to whether engaging in martial arts um, where one might be striking the face is permissible. Um, there's also discussions that go on to boxing, all of which I'm going to come to in a moment. But this is the hadith that a lot of people use, both scholars and laymen, or laymen having taken this from their scholars, in order to argue that there should be no striking of the face, whether it's in training, whether it's in sport, or even as a matter of self-defense. So first of all, I'd like to talk about the hadith itself, which is narrated in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, which is, إذا قاتل أحدكم فليجتنب الوجه If um, one of you are to fight, or if somebody, if you're going to fight, then don't strike at the face, or avoid, sorry, فليجتنب means to avoid the face. Now that's one variant of the hadith, and that's the wording in Al-Bukhari. In Muslim, the wording is إِذَا ضَرَبَ أَحَدُكُمْ أَخَاهُ If one of you are to strike your brother, then avoid hitting him in the face. Which brother is the Prophet, peace be upon him, referring to? Now, a lot of people assume that here, أَخَاهُ, his brother, is basically talking about his Muslim brother, or his believing brother, or maybe even his um, biological brother. But that's not the case, because there are variant narrations of this hadith, and if you're to look at all of them, you'll come to understand who the Prophet, peace be upon him, was referring to. So in another narration, the Prophet said, إِذَا ضَرَبَ أَحَدُكُمْ خَادِمَهُ If one of you is to strike his khadim, his servant or slave, um, and in a very famous story on this topic um, that's related by Suwaid ibn Muqarrin from the Muqarrin tribe and Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in Fath al-Bari discuss, he talks about this story, he, he actually relates it. Um, Suwaid ibn Muqarrin is teaching some people um, about the notion of not hitting somebody in the face and he follows up with the statement أَوَمَا عَلِمْتَ أَنَّ الصُّورَةَ muharrama Do you not know that the surah yeah, um, and the physical form is muharram, it's sanctified, it's sacred. God created it. So anything that leads to destroying it or to defacing it or di- di- to disfiguring it is impermissible. Um, you know, um, in that sense, just on the battlefield, um, the Prophet um, prohibited um, so I'm translating the sentence. The Prophet prohibited disfiguring bodies. So Naha Rasulullah Sallallahu and in Muthla, yeah, um, as the Hadith goes, and it's narrated by a number of uh, Sahaba, amongst them um, Ibn uh, um, Imran, Ibn Hussein, and others. But going back to the point about striking the face. A lot of people will use, for example, the statement of Ibn Hajar al Asqalani in Fath al Bari, um, talking about that point. Saying that he said, um, striking the face is impermissible. So anything that goes, and they use this in its generality, anything to do with striking the face is impermissible. And that's not the case because the hadith itself is not as they would say in Arabic, ala italaqihi, right? Or mutlaqan. It's not unqualified as an unrestricted. It was talking about people at a time when um, in Arabia, 
a form of servitude, serv uh, slavery servitude existed. It was talking about masters being able to strike their servants. I'm, I'm, I'm careful to use the, the, the term slave because it's not what we understand in the modern term to be. But of course, that's a, a discussion for another time. However, going back to the point, which is the hadith was talking about masters striking yep, their servants. Now, Suwaid ibn Muqarrin, who was of the Muqarrin tribe, relates the story that there was a man from amongst the tribe who had struck one of the servant girls. Latamaha. He had slapped really, really badly, really hard. When the case was brought before the Prophet, as in it was mentioned, the Prophet ordered um, the Muqarrins, basically the tribe, to free her straight away. Um, and that shocked them because there was, um, you know, there was a lot of, of abuse um, when it came to the servants. Now, one might say, okay, but the first hadith that you laid, which is the hadith of, of, of today, the hadith of Abu Huraira, If one of you fights his brother, um, avoid the face. What about that then? But here, who is the akh? Who is the brother? In a famous hadith of Abi Dhar al-Ghifari, or once he turned up, after, after the Prophet, peace be upon him, had passed, he turned up and, you know, he, um, he, he was with, a, he was with um, a servant, a ghulam, a young servant boy. And he was wearing a huli, he was wearing some form of chain necklace, and so was jewellery, and, and so was, sorry, the servant boy. So they asked him, how come your servant's wearing jewellery like you're wearing jewellery? And he said, because the Prophet told us to treat them as our brothers. And what was the Prophet, peace be upon him's wording? Ikhwanukum khawalakum. I'm sorry. Um, they are your brothers who are there to serve you. جَعَلَهُمُ اللَّهُ تَحْتَ أَيْدِيكُمْ God has placed them under your hands, meaning under your power, under your supervision, under your charge. So if any of you find his brother تَحْتَ يَدِهِ under his hand, his brother. So here the reference to seven slave that you would call them in English, in fact, was seen as your brothers. Yes, there might be a hierarchical position. But they were considered to be brothers. And this is what the Prophet, peace be upon him, is referring to in the hadith of Abi Huraira. If you fight one of them, meaning if you strike them. So this hadith is not unqualified. It's not to say that nobody can ever be struck in the face ever. In fact, there's a very famous hadith you might have heard, um, which is the hadith of Abi Huraira, which is also narrated in Bukhari and Muslim, where the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Lo anna rajulan alayka. If there was a man and he's kind of like spying on you. He's looking through the window or he's looking through a hole in your wall. Without permission to do so. And you throw a pebble or a stone. And you take out his eye. There will be no liability on you. Now that's not to say you should go out your way to do these things, of course. But if it happened, it wouldn't be criminally, or according to criminal law, it wouldn't be a liability in which you would have to face a judge. Of course, then there's the notion of war itself. There's a difference between muthlah, which is to disfigure a dead body, of course, and striking people. Now, of course, if you're striking in the ancient medieval world, you're striking for people's necks, there might be, um, or there is, the probability that you probably end up striking at the face at one point. And Allah the Most High said, And if they are aggressive towards you, then be aggressive towards them in the way that they were aggressive towards you. And in that sense, a lot of jurists said, whilst the default position is not to disfigure people, if that's what they're going out their way to do on the battlefield, then you ought to fight them with the same level of vehemency. So my point is in the principle of striking the face, it's not unqualified that you can't do it. No, you shouldn't do it as a matter of ta'deeb and as zajr. Ta'deeb means to treat, um, sorry, to tell people off. Zajr means uh, um, punishment. But we're talking about in a social setting of family, of course in the medieval period when there was slavery, that kind of time. This isn't talking about people 
otherwise. So that's one. Number two, let's distinguish between sports and self-defense here. Now in sports, are you allowed to strike somebody? Yeah, in the face. Well, the prohibition here about striking people in the face is very much, as we say in Arabic or in Arabic law, muallal. It depends on the reason, the illa. What is the legal reason behind the prohibition? Well, it's very self-evident, or evidently, sorry, self-evidently, it's harm. For example, it goes back to the hadith, la dar wa la darar. There should be no harm, a person shouldn't be harmed, nor should anybody reciprocate harm to others. So if this is a form of harm, then it's not something that we should do. But then that becomes slightly what's subjective, because what do we deem to be harmful? So for example, somebody's a grappler. Let's take punching or striking out of the conversation. Somebody's a grappler. An arm bar can be harmful. Well, it is painful. Somebody has to tap out. But at the same time, and if somebody moves, if you have somebody, for example, if somebody's caught in a footlock, yeah, or in a heel hook, which is where the heel is stuck between someone's arm and a slight twist will, will, will snap the knee. Now, you can catch somebody in a heel hook and if they suddenly twist themselves in the wrong direction, their knee will break. There is that possibility. But of course, if people are training and they understand what to do and the minute they feel the pressure, they let the, their, their, their friends know, their opponent, the opponent know, um, or they tap out, then that harm is averted. But there is also always the possibility. So does the possibility of harm mean that one can't do something? No. It's a balance. It's about having safety mechanisms in place, but that shouldn't take away from the idea of actually engaging in some, f or, or having some form of martial engagement. One might argue, well, what's the point? Well, martial literacy is extremely important. Allah the Most High has told human beings, either explicitly or implicitly, and there are inferences in the Quran, about the forms of literacy that believers ought to have. Amongst them, linguistic literacy, as in linguistic competence. We should all know how to speak properly, how to articulate ourselves, how to use language. Number two, um, intellectual literacy, how to reason. Yeah, cognitive literacy, how to reason, how to produce a sound argument and sound systems of thinking. We need mathematical literacy, how to do accounts, how to count, how, how to... Uh, um, look at contracts, yeah? look at numbers, scientific literacy, understand how things work. Um, we need theological literacy, what does God want of us? We need literacy in etiquettes, in social etiquettes, you know, in, in moral etiquettes, how to be people of dignity and honour, how to be peaceful people, but people of principle, people who are resolute people of fortitude, how to treat others, how to speak, how to be polite, how to be chivalrous. These are things that Allah the Most High wants and expects of the intelligent believer. And along with all of that is martial literacy. Doesn't Allah the Most High tell us in Surah Tawbah, وَأَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ And prepare for them, meaning those people who would come out of their way to harm you for nefarious reasons, learn how to protect yourself. Now that we're talking about sports, and I'll leave that for another time, because what I want to concentrate on here is self-defense. Now, training for self-defense requires striking in the face and requires being struck in the face, i.e. the intention. Because in self-defense, in fighting an opponent, you need to know how to stop an opponent. And the, the, the purpose of striking somebody in the face isn't, to open up their face, isn't to cause them to bleed. It's either to knock somebody out, to make them fall unconscious. It's not necessarily to kill them, to, to, to knock somebody out, or it could be to harm them enough that gives them the impetus to stop attacking you. The whole pop -pop notion here is self-defense. Now, when you're training, you need somebody to strike at your face. You need those angles. It's a matter of physics. You need somebody to strike towards the face so you know how to move out of the way. You know what to do. You're not suddenly 
struck in awe or in surprise because you're not used to it. You're used to seeing things flying towards you. You know how to parry, you know how to block. And it becomes normalised. And number two, you're always going to have gloves. Very rarely do people go to strike in the face without some form of protection. Protection for their friend or opponent, who they or their training partner, sorry, who they're fighting with, but they also to protect their own hands. Now, when somebody goes to hit, especially in a training circumstance, when somebody is training and goes to hit with one of these, and this is uh, an MMA pad, but you also get gloves, mitts, boxing mitts, and so on. When somebody goes to hit, they're not trying to take your head off your neck. But what they're trying to do is register the punch. Give the face and the head some form of impact so it registers. Oh, I was hit. Next time, I'll try not to. And yes, it might be uncomfortable. But uncomfortability doesn't necessitate harm, number one. And number two, um, being hit registers so that you don't want it to happen again. But that's all training for the real world. To use this hadith, do not strike the face, to not train for this, is literally right, to hamstring yourself as a believer who wants to be able to defend themselves. And Allah the Most High tells us, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَةِ وَأَحْسِنُوا And do not, um, do not make your, or do not use by your own hands, cause your own destruction. Here is actually the lack of the use of your own hands which will lead to destruction. Now, there's a difference, take going back to the hadith, between striking somebody because you're irritated with them, and that's very serious, yeah, and beating them, and then striking as a skill. And this form of martial literacy is extremely important because one, the striking itself, you need to learn accuracy. And number two, being struck, you learn how to defend yourself. And this is, without a shadow of a doubt, what God wills. Now you have these, well, those who have said that training, being hit, striking during training is impermissible. A lot of these fatwas, very unfortunately, end up coming from people who haven't either understood the law in its entirety, or, and, unfortunately, unengaged in the realm of martial literacy, they don't have much martial literacy themselves. And of course, being a fighter, learning how to fight, also shapes your understanding of the variables at play and how to understand harm in this context. Now, going back, one might say, well, even if you're fighting somebody in real life, in a form of self-defense, of course, then you're not allowed you're not allowed to do these things of course you are what's not normally permissible of course becomes permissible when something egregious takes place and when somebody attacks you for example there's a very famous hadith um, of abi huraira may allah be pleased with him which is recorded in sahih muslim where the prophet said oh sorry a man came to the prophet and he said uh, ya rasulullah o messenger of god ara'ayta in ja'a rajulun Yuridu akhdamali. What do you think of a person who comes and he wants to take my wealth? The Prophet said to him, Fala tuti'hu. Don't obey him, don't give him your wealth. Let him know, it's not happening. He said, Araita in qatalani. What about if he fights me? The Prophet said, Fakatilhu, then fight him. And he said, Araita in qatalani. What about if he kills me? The Prophet said, Fa anta shaheed, then you are a martyr. And he said, Ara'ita in qataltuhu? What about if I happened to then kill him? Of course, the, the Sahabi himself, the companion who's asking, is saying, okay, it, it could happen. The Prophet said, فَهُوَ فِي النَّارِ Then he is in the fire because his intentions were evil. Yours was merely self-defense. You didn't intend oppression. You didn't intend, you know, um, um, to take anything from him. And you wish peace and goodwill to all of mankind. So here it's very much about one, the intention, and number two, as in the intention behind fighting and striking somebody, and then number two, what we mean by harm. When um, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani or other scholars who've commented on this hadith that people tend to quote like um, Imam al-Nawawi, for example, were they talking about this scenario where we have 
gloves where you can get helmets right and even if you don't have you know padding around the head where people are using gloves they're training they're striking not in a way to leave somebody you know completely battered right yes you might get a slight graze you might even get darker patch around the eye after one training session this comes with the roads. Of course, there's a difference between that and coming out with a massive purple eye here, a massive bruise there, and you're like that week in, week out. But some things that happen accidentally, for anybody who fights, they know, you always have a little graze. You know, some people have cauliflower ears from the impact, and so on. Those little things happen, and they weren't intended. And there's no significant, they, when we say harm, the harm is probably more aesthetic than anything else. So do those things stand for this hadith? No, not at all. There are arguments for which people should not be engaging in certain forms right, of, 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 um, of fight, fighting, for example. Yes, there's a big conversation to be had about boxing as a professional sport and whether it's um, appropriate for believers to become boxers. And that's not something I intend to engage with here. But where we're talking about harm... There is, the only harm in this given situation is to use this hadith that was very clearly talking about, you know, women folk, children, people of your household, um, you know, servants and so on. And applying that in an unqualified fashion to something that hasn't got much to do with it. So with that, I'll end this episode and hope you all get into the training and know that this hadith isn't the hadith to stop you. And as God intends for you to be, be strong. Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Al Mu'min al Qawi, Ahabu ilallah. And in another narration, Khairun wa Ahabu ilallah. That the strong believer is better and more loved to God, min al Mu'min al Da'if, than the weak believer. Wa fi kullin khair. And in both there is good. And this form of strength, as opposed to weakness, is the strength of the aql, of the intellect, as well as the strength of the body. So we'll end it there. Please share this video, subscribe, and um, press the like button. And God willing, we'll see you in the next episode.